<coughs> yes we start good afternoon to one and all present here welcome to this national webinar on developing machine learning applications using python framework now i call upon our hod sir dr t velpurgan to propose the welcome address sir good ah uh, yes good afternoon everybody it's my pleasure to welcome the today's webinar chief guest mr srinivasan danakrishnan founder and ceo of closis technology solutions private limited chennai uh mr srinivasan is my friend for the past 25 years more than 25 26 years he having lot of exposure like teaching as well as industry he having a, a, a teaching experience of more than 20 years and for the past more than 10 years he having exposure with the industries he is a person in knowledge sharing about the high performance computing and operating systems and software as a source for handling any kind of information regarding the world wide web and other kind of uh, nano computing grid computing and cloud computing the recent technologies he have a lot of knowledge about the blockchain technology and other kind of uh, uh, iot device oriented industry iot device oriented everything so uh, uh, students you can uh, gain more knowledge from him uh, the person uh, today's webinar resource person having a lot of exposure in both teaching as well as industry because such a kind of person is not possible to find out uh, by ourselves okay so welcome you sir on behalf of the department of computer applications and on behalf of the college management principal and secretary <coughs> i welcome you once again thank you sir yes sir thank you thank you sir now i call upon mr n jagadishan assistant professor in department of computer application to give introduction about our chief guest thank you lata a uh, very good afternoon to all i am profusely overjoyed to take the opportunity to introduce our chief guest of the day he is none other than mr srinivasan tanu krishnan he is the founder and ceo of glosis technology solutions private limited he holds a master degree in computer science and engineering from anna university and masters degree in business administration from university of madras he plays a key role in defining the strategy in terms of business development resource management technology transfer benchmarking conjoint analysis and process improvement with his 25 years of it experience his primary interests includes artificial intelligence and data analytics driven secure smart saas applications for business he is uh, instrumental in designing and development developing products for glosis crm site glosis hcm cloud glosis itsm software and glosis intelligent analytics platform he has earlier held the position of senior research fellow at iit kharagpur and he published 60 research papers in various reputed international conferences and journals including the role of program committee member reviewer and session chair based on his outstanding research service he has been selected as a candidate for inclusion in the edition of mark us who is who in the world new jersey usa he offered training to cts system uh, satyam computer service sintel india limited and vipro systems he has been acknowledged as a cognizant certified faculty by cognizant technology solutions he is a member of professional bodies include iste and internet society of usa he is an industry representative for academic inst institutions for I ai cte and federation of indian industry survey and he is a frequent speaker at industry and academic through active involvement or in offering hands on workshops and fdps on data science using python r and scala deep learning using pytorch and tensorflow 
big data on hadoop ai driven blockchain cyber security analytics cloud based iot analytics using raspberry pi and ros ai based mobile and web application using node js ror golang flask spring boot angular react android and flutter and also keynote talks in reputed national and international conferences entrepreneurship and business schools panel discussion judge for application so application development hackathons and board of studies expert committee members thank you sir yes nada thank you jagdish sir now i hand over the session to our resource person srinivasan tanukrishnan sir yes sir thank you very much uh, first of all i would like to express my sincere warm thanks to professor dr velmurugan uh, hod of uh, department of computer applications of dg vaishnava college for having invited me to deliver such a wonderful webinar for the better benefit of the students community today i am going to show uh, how machine learning applications can be developed using python framework probably i would like to share my experience and most probably everything will be in the form of understanding concepts thoroughly using python starting from analysis design development and deployment i have planned to elaborate my session in this following fashion first i will be concentrating on machine learning in industries what kind of impact machine is going to make or it has been making in industries and what kind of services machine learning services we provide from our own company like other big and small and startup companies how machine learning is going to be leveraged using python frameworks how deep learning is harnessing the power in it industries with respect to various vertical domains such as healthcare retail telecommunication and so on and finally we will see a few ml use cases in industries and at the end of the session Uh, probably i may be showing a few demo my idea is to make a focus on development of the machine learning application using python framework from the scratch to the advanced level and also i am sure that the targeted audience will be able to follow whatever i speak but this area machine learning is one of the topics is coming under artificial intelligence so ai is the superset which consists of machine learning as a sub component again machine learning will be having another sub component deep learning and data science and big data analytics and all these areas are interrelated with one another to achieve the particular task as far as the it industries is concerned we have a greater demand for the machine learning developers and data scientist and big data analyst business analyst and business executives and ml administrators so for all these roles students can concentrate heavily by improving their practical knowledge in ict industries we have various domains retail domain health care transportation education communications media and entertainment technology and information services automotive electronic systems manufacturing energy and utilities and insurance normally what happens we will be developing the applications for other vertical industries probably everybody knows how you get a wonderful service from amazon or flipkart by browsing a set of products 
when you are interested in placing the order for the products what do you do in the amazon or flipkart you keep on browsing the set of products available in the catalog with respect to your choice you may be selecting and the selected product should be made available in the warehouse that means the inventory checking will automatically be carried out when the order is available from the other end that will get confirmed again those products will be delivered to your house and before delivery or after delivery you are permitted to pay the amount the entire phenomena whatever i say is very obvious any one can understand this phenomena even the end user even your parents your grandparents even children nowadays school going students are capable of placing the order of any products as they wish the only thing the parents are supposed to give the right uh pin number for transferring the amount or uh, during that time only the children may be getting help from their parents so this is the total scenario of the e-commerce what i have been telling is the e-commerce in this e-commerce application how machine learning is going to make an impact for example if you have a amazon or flipkart flipkart account for one year or 6 months at any time any user is able to see the past history okay the past history depending upon your past transaction depending upon the choice of items you have selected automatically the recommendation will be done from the machine learning applications recommendation as per your choice okay the preferred items will be displayed in the front end that's what i'm saying for example you are very much interested in watching a lot of uh, music uh, videos or okay uh, you may be interested in viewing the music playlist what will happen for you, after viewing every music you may be giving the rating so depending upon the rating the more the music or the movie with the top rating will be displayed and every movie or the music may be having the duration and the rating probably now you can understand where the machine learning comes this is also coming under the scenario of the recommendation system so another scenario i can tell from the health care nowadays in health care the doctors and health care providers insurance companies pharmaceutical companies i mean life science industries are heavily utilizing the power of machine learning and deep learning at any time right the paperless work has to be done that's the idea of the health care industry we are, i am be talking about the health care industry so in health care industry how i can apply machine learning so i can give second example the first example i already given from the e-commerce where i was explaining the power of the recommendation system in the case of health care what i am going to explain is medical text analytics or disease diagnosis disease diagnosis so medical text analysis in the sense that for example how automation of medical text analytics can be carried out with the support of machine learning packages in healthcare industry normally what happens if you do not use the computers or if you do not use the technology or machine learning applications and all earlier we had the hospital but the entire system was in the form of lot of documents paper oriented work was existing earlier nowadays everything has become computer oriented even when the patient wants to have a consultation with the doctor 
the patient has to make an appointment. So the appointment cannot be given immediately. The appointment. Similarly, the electronic health record of the patients can be visualized at any time by the patients as well as doctors. But confidential issues will be maintained. So what I would like to tell you, suppose for example, uh, whenever the doctor visits the hospitals, he may be dictating certain things to the nurse to take care of the patients. What the nurse will do, the nurses will note down the notes or sometimes the doctor may be giving notes with respect to the concerned patient. So doctor's notes will be there for every visit and they maintain it in the record log. Similarly, health record, the daily status, daily health status of each and every patient will be maintained by the healthcare industry, I mean hospitals. Now, how automated disease diagnosis and how automated ward management and how the medical text textual information can be extracted from the physical documents. So now the problem, what I am going to mention is extraction of data, extraction of information from the physical document. So extraction of health data means extraction of the entity and extraction of the relationship. So with respect to health data, definitely every patient will be having a few attributes, patient ID for every patient, the hospital may be assigning certain things, patient ID, patient name, when the patient got appointed, how long he has been in the hospital and the discharge a process and everything will be there. Even test report, lab report, each and every attribute, whatever I'm going to say is nothing but Features, features. So these features will be represented in the form of columns. Suppose, for example, in the particular hospital, there are 100 patients means 100 records will be there. For each and every record, such uh, separate attributes will be maintained. This is what we call it as data set. So technically, we call it as data set. With respect to the... The scenario from the healthcare, what I wanted to tell you is text analytics. So how text analytics or health text analytics can be carried out by NLP. That is a subject called natural language processing, which is associated with the machine learning. So machine learning is a very, AI is a very big subject actually. And so the what you might have understood till now, definitely there has to be data. So first, let me explain machine learning very clearly within 5 to 10 minutes. Everyone can understand. Then I can move through Python programming. I can show some demos. Then some mathematical concepts will also be there. I don't want to uh, mathematical concepts uh, too deeply in the online session. But at the same time, I show little bit uh, mathematical concepts in such a way that everyone can understand. No problem. It's easier. The only thing you need to understand the concepts you have to solve the problems really uh, one thing i wanted to tell you uh, now the to whether you might have come from uh, state board or central board or icc uh, bsc cs or bca or sometimes btech or be or even from any college what you have to understand why you are studying mathematics the mathematics is being taught from the schools even from uh, first standard to the 12th standard. But the connectivity from the mathematics and the computer application, not only computer engineering application, any engineering disciplines, science uh, disciplines. Okay. Now, there is a correlation between core mathematical subjects and machine learning uh, topics, machine learning applications. Because what I have to do, I have to connect from school to college and college to industry. In industry, what we are expecting from the college students, final year students, when they come for the interview. That if I make it clear, everyone can understand, oh, 
for this purpose only i am studying maths so i will come mathematics after some time so so far what i have explained somehow with respect to e-commerce or recommendation system or text analytics everywhere you find some data because with respect to the e-commerce the product data will be there and product recommendation with respect to the uh, users with respect to the choice of the users the products will be recommended by the machine learning uh, models similarly in the health care depending upon the health status of the patients the conditions of the health for the particular patient should be maintained and the lab report must be visualized and verified by the doctors and they have to diagnose the disease so like that lot of many application many problems probably i can give lot of scenarios from transportation education information services electronic systems and the insurance okay due to shortage of time i have taken only two domains retail and healthcare before getting into the the machine learning using python and all first you have to have a clear understanding of the key terms data set i think now i made it clear what is the data set data set is nothing but a table in the table you will have certain records for each record you will have a set of uh, attributes for example patient data so uh, in the hospital they may be having 500 patients for each patient they will be having some information so for each patient means record uh, i mean a set of patients for you may be suppose if you are having 500 patient in 500 records for each patient i have 10 attributes mean 10 columns that is nothing but the uh, columns and rows they form the matrix that is a table that is nothing but a data set second term samples so the data set is nothing but the table for the time being remember like that samples means records i already said that if the hospital is interested in collecting 500 patients means 500 records 500 samples features mean for each patient for example uh, 15 columns mean 15 features so features attributes field column everything is same and on synonyms so once you have a clear idea behind data set sample features now you have to train the okay data set using certain model you have to develop a model you have to develop a model using some training again for the unseen data for the unseen data you have to test the data so there are two phases training and testing which are of primary interest in both machine learning as well as deep learning i will show one example so that everyone can understand this is a small training data set from all electronics so if you look at this table uh, how many columns i have five columns age income student credit rating and class the first four columns the first four attributes are input attributes the last one is the Uh, output attribute that i have written two classes yes or no so what is the interpretation of this problem uh, first uh, you count the number of rows or number of records in this table i hope uh, 12 records will be there so technically i call like this there are 12 samples in this data set for each sample i have five attributes age income student credit rating and class out of these five attributes the first four are input the last one is out if you look at the values of the output attribute i have two values yes or no so what i like to tell you so age income student credit rating i have 12 records and uh, suppose the people with the age first i can give the interpretation of the first record the person the people with the uh, age less than or equal to 30 income is high and he is not a student but the credit rating is fair okay uh, whether the uh, it can be he can purchase a computer or not this is a famous example from one of the data mining textbooks so the what is the problem behind this table whether the particular 
candidate is able to purchase the computer or not, purchasing the computer or not. Similarly, uh, whether the fraudulent transactions are existing or not. And similarly, whether the disease is, uh, suppose the, whether the disease is existing for the particular patient or not, like that. Suppose a brain tumor, oh, okay, cancer deduction. Cancers, brain tumor cancer has been detected or not. So these problems are called as yes or no problem. I call it as binary classification problem. So in machine learning, we start with a binary classification problem. As far as this problem is concerned, the candidate with the attributes, age, income, student, credit rating with the following values will be able to purchase the computer or not. This is the core idea of the machine learning. And probably this is one of the learning models. We call it as supervised learning model. Why I call it a supervised learning model? Because I have only one output attribute. If you look at the one output attribute, uh, whether the computer can be purchased or not. Output attribute. Remaining the output attribute, I have four remaining input attributes. This is what we mean by supervised learning. When you talk about the learning, I already said that machine learning means what? How the machine is going to learn by itself. We human beings add the wonderful brain. And the brain, when you look at the anatomy of the brain, the brain is having a lot of billions of neurons which are interconnected with one another. It forms the network, like a traffic network. Even if you look at your brain itself, each and every neuron will be doing some functionality. For example, while you are going to watch the movie, uh, certain neurons may be allocated for watching the movie. Certain neurons may be in parallel sending the message through the uh, mobile. And uh, in parallel, you can do a lot of activities. Okay, that's the idea of the parallel interconnected neural network. So the parallel interconnected neural network behaves uh, like a brain and we simulate it. That's why we call it as the artificial neural network. So artificial neural network is one of the supervised learning models in machine learning. We have a lot of learning models. There are two major categories, supervised learning model and unsupervised learning model. Yet another category is the reinforcement learning model. For the time being, let us concentrate on supervised learning model. I hope I made it clear. So with this uh, basic uh, prerequisites, now we will proceed further. If in the previous case, 14 examples were there. So what's happening now? Again, uh, the training data, name, rank, years, tenure. Another example. This is another example. Uh, training data, as far as this problem is concerned, how many records are there? Two, four, six records. How many features are there? Four features. Out of these four features in the uh, training data set, the last tenure is the output classifier. Yes or no? So three attributes are there. So over this training data, because hereafter I used to make use of the word training data, testing data repeatedly, but you have to understand what it is. So over this training data, I may be applying the classification algorithms. There are many classification algorithms that are all you have to understand and you have to solve the problems. It's a very big subject, probably 40 or 50 classification algorithms are available and each and every algorithm as per the theoretical course, you may be studying, I hope so and that you have to solve it. I tell you one thing, suppose I am uh, recruiting one ML developer for my company or Infosys or TCS or uh, any big company, Zogo or Kodo, uh, Kodo Global, uh, interested in Accenture, is in, uh, all these companies are interested in selecting the machine learning developer or data scientist means, first you have to understand the concepts, then you must be capable of solving the problems. These problems only should be represented in coding. For example, write a C program to find the roots of the quadratic equation. You know the syntax of the C program. But unless you know the roots of the quadratic equation which you studied in 11th or 12th, how it is possible for you to write a program? Similarly, there are many classification algorithms, uh, supervised classification algorithms, unsupervised classification algorithms. And one of the supervised classification algorithms only what we are going to discuss is neural network. Because uh, for this uh, particular uh, Webinar, I would like to give an elaborate uh, idea behind 
neural network because uh, deep learning is a sub component of the machine learning i already said in deep learning is specifically concentrating on only neural networks okay uh, now so classification algorithms uh, look at the training data again you are creating a model you are generating the model you are create generating the model from the classification algorithms so what the model somehow uh, when i say the classifier algorithm suppose you have to look at the neural network algorithm naturally when i say neural network you have to look at the neural network algorithm you must understand properly and what i mean by input layer hidden layer output layer what i mean by activation function let us see again the model will be generated from the training data using neural network model and the last two one is if rank equal to professor or year years greater than 6 then returned equal to yes that is for the model construction and again model usage now the last one the model is giving the answer if rank equal to professor okay or yes greater than 6 then tenured equal to yes actually this condition is not there so these conditions are existing from the table and uh, even while you are going to make use of bayesian learning algorithm or decision tree algorithms support vector machine rules will be followed rules will be formed so second so what you have to understand i have written something sklearn sklearn is coming under the python package so for the time being you note down and because each and everything is a separate sub courses even in our industry we give certification courses if you join you can understand in a better way okay now using sklearn you can construct the model again uh, using this sklearn you will be able to Uh, test the data so i already said the training and testing what i am showing is the training data now the second one is the testing data sklearn model uses testing data so what i am going to test this is the test unseen data okay the test is jeff professor comma 4 jeff professor comma 4 so that is unseen data actually testing data jeff professor comma 4 what will happen uh, training and testing data will be considered from the given data set only actually you will be given only one data set you can partition uh, a few portions into the training and the remaining portion into test data set normally we divide like this 4 is to 1 or sometimes 3 is to 2 80 is to 20 or 3 is to whatever way so test data you have to form so this is the basic idea training data set you should know how to form you should know how to form the test data set using the test data set when i use the model i mean classify a neural network i will be able to predict whether it is going to be yes or no so for such kind of uh, machine learning problems uh, we use neural networks okay now what machine learning services we provide from our company even all the big companies are also providing the same kind of machine learning services whether it's going to be google or yahoo or amazon or ibm and cts and uh, accenture all companies may be interested in providing such machine learning services towards their customers so for our customers what we do we build the model i already said we build the model and we train the model and test the test it then we will be deploying and training data sets now you know whatever uh, key term i am going to read i hope everybody will be able to follow training data sets so you are interested in training data sets so data is not a simple term and again theoretically now i have been speaking but practically when you get into the concepts it seems to be very difficult but of course it is easier when you take practice but you have to understand for example training data set who is giving data set next you can ask many questions training data set from where you are taking this data set who is providing data set actually the problem is in industries the data set will be taken from the transactional data actually for example uh, the bank either sbi or info uh, sbi or indian bank is having lot of transactions with uh, their customers for example for the past 6 months data and uh, what normally do there are two activities will happen with respect to the data one is database another one is data warehousing database means current transactions data warehouse means past transactions for example a uh, particular uh, customer is having uh, account in the 
bank for five years. Okay, so five years transaction will be there. But the bank will be dealing with the current transaction. Similarly, the customer will also be interested in seeing the current transactions only. The past, for example, I have to fix the period, whether the six months or three months. What is the meaning of the current transaction? The duration of the current transaction, three months or six months, something like that. I have to tell. It may be varying from company to company. If I say the duration of the, my current transaction for the banking application is, for example, six months, and I keep it currently in the production server. And uh, the previous data, I mean, previous transaction, four and a half years data, I may be uh, migrating from the uh, RDAB, RDBMS to OLAP, that is data warehouse. So the, normally the past transactions will be transferred to another place that we call as a data warehouse. Actually, <coughs> from the data warehouse only, the, from the past transactions only, always you do uh, classification or clustering or prediction and all. But at the same time, the current data will also be associated with the past data. Because at any point, uh, suppose uh, 2021 20, may be the current transactions for now. But in the next year, this 2021 20, will become the past data. So always the, along with the past data, the current data will keep, will be added. That you have to understand. That is the meaning of the data set. So data set. Normally what we do, uh, normally the researchers will take the data set from the public uh, okay, website. But with respect to the industries, the data sets will be private. They may not be revealing because for their own transactions, they will be using them. So formation of the data set itself is a big problem that you have to understand. We will see. And again, how to prepare the data, how to aggregate the data. So data itself is a very big problem, data preparation. So actually in industry, uh, there is one role uh, for the AI community. The role is called ELT practitioners. I mean, ELT practitioners. We used to say ELT practitioners or data analyst. And the data analyst may not be dealing with the data modeling. Actually, the whole machine learning uh, can have uh, four major divisions. I mean, three major divisions. One is uh, data uh, preparation. It has to be prepared very well. Then data modeling. Once the model is over, data visualization. I mean, after finishing your training and testing data, you have to show the results to uh, other people. And these results should be should ex exist in the front-end application, user interface. So for time being, remember like that. First one, data preparation. I mean, data pre-processing will come under the data preparation. The second one is data modeling. The third one is data visualization. Data preparation, data modeling, data visualization. Please, you remember these three uh, major concepts which will occur in both machine learning as well as deep learning. Uh, now, whatever I say, data sets, how you can prepare the data, aggregate the data, training data sets, everything. I mean, data, everything is coming to the first one. But while you are going to deal with the training and testing only, data modeling comes. Okay. To store, update, and retrieve features. I already made it clear. Features is nothing but columns. Okay, you can store the features, you can update the features, at any point you'll be able to retrieve the features. The ML models and algorithms, this is a second component, ML models and algorithms, there only your supervised classifier or neural network will be existing. So whatever way you are going to develop the machine learning applications, finally you have to deploy in the cloud. Deploy in the cloud, which consists of the clusters. Uh, you remember like that server some server you have to deploy and that cloud server may be connected to any devices through wi-fi or uh, okay offline mode or online mode whatever way in terms of the networking equipments and all so definitely you need to have wonderful high performance cost effective scalable infrastructure okay without uh, uh, wonderful high performance cost effective scalable infrastructure you may not be able to run machine learning or deep learning applications. Similarly, in the ML workflow, now I already made it clear, ML workflow. ML workflow means first you have to collect the data, you have to store the data, and you have to transform the data from one form to another form. 
because the data may be having noise. So whatever data you are going to collect, it may have some noise. What is the meaning of noisy data? For example, uh, uh, suppose the students appear for five subjects. Okay, uh, Tamil, English, Max, Physics, Chemistry, like that. So for the for each and every subject, the maximum mark will be hundred. When the after correction, unfortunately, the, in the COE side, controller of examination side, uh, error is happening. So actually, the maximum mark hundred. Somehow, uh, instead of hundred, someone has put one not one. It may not be accepted. Similarly, it should be within the range zero to hundred only. Minus one is not permitted. One not one is not permitted. So negative value or above hundred, below zero or above hundred, not permitted. So somehow. Uh, the wrong data, the wrong data is going to appear in the actual data. You have to remove that noise. Okay, noise is nothing but wrong data. You have to remove the noise. So the noise can be removed by certain mechanisms that we call as a data cleaning. So data cleaning, so data cleaning, data extraction, data transformation. Uh, data loading, everything will come under the first phase data preparation. The second phase is uh, data modeling. In data modeling, we already discussed training and testing. Data visualization deals with the uh, report analysis. Fine. Uh, we will see the word bias later because when I'm going to run the code, you can understand what we mean by bias. Then, yeah, anyhow, after generating the model, you have to optimize the model. What is the meaning of the model? You have to optimize the model. And for generating, after generating the model, you will find certain metrics, accuracy, precision, recall, and all these measures will have to be found. Uh, 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 whatever key terms I am telling towards uh, undergraduate students, just to you note down for the time being. Okay, don't worry. So you will be experimenting certain models using Python. And you have to train the data and test the data. And finally, you have to uh, find certain outcome with respect to metrics, accuracy, precision, recall, and all. Final accuracy has to be normally about 95 percentage, 99 percentage for any experimentation. Uh, this is data partitioning and model partition. These are the advanced concepts coming under the data set as well as modeling in terms of the GPU, GPU clusters. Because nowadays, uh, in the context of deep learning only, we make use of data partitioning, model partition. Once you develop the YAML and it has to be tested, that is continuous integration and continuous delivery. And these models can also be existing on the devices. So whatever I say, everything may not be available in the actual textbook. This is the actual strategy we are following in the industry. So CA, CAD service, models on devices, and with respect to GPU, uh, data partitioning, model partitioning, we follow. Now I get into the Python. Uh, slowly I explain the programming to some extent, then mathematical part uh, to some extent. Finally, I run the demo. When you are now, this is a programming part. Machine learning using Python. So I have a Python libraries for machine learning. First of all, uh, before getting into the actual YAML packages uh, based on Python, one should be strong in understanding basic Python. And also, when you are going to develop any application, the application should follow the object-oriented programming. I mean, object-oriented programming style in terms of classes and how you can create an object, uh, how you can make use of the inheritance, polymorphism, like C++ and Java. Python is also following the style of object orientation. Such object orientation, you have to follow. Python libraries for machine learning. And uh, one after another, I can tell you now, NumPy is first library. So you have to take some practice using NumPy. NumPy is dealt for dealing with the array, multidimensional array. Then data pre-processing using Pandas. So what are the functionalities of data pre-processing? I already said, I hope everybody is able to recall. Data pre-processing means why I have to pre-process the data? Before I send the data, Towards the training or testing, the data must be clear. The data must be in the uh, proper format. Then only it may be suitable for training and testing. 
so the data should not have wrong values i mean and similarly the data should not be missing if there is a missing value in the data set you have to find the missing value the missing value can be replaced or missing value can be uh, dropped now theoretically i use the word you find the missing value in the data pre processing clean it eliminate it and uh, you find the noisy value fine practically how will you be doing this is the question so in industry what we are expecting from the students the students must be capable of understanding the concepts through problem solving definitely mathematical skills are required apart from mathematical skills you should write the code because anybody can say okay you can clean the data you can transform the data and uh, you have to filter the data but how it is going to happen through the code so i will run the uh, pandas programming so this is specifically we have we have the pandas programming for data preprocessing similarly sklearn another uh, package is sklearn which is useful for implementing supervised learning and unsupervised learning and matplotlib is used for data visualization so what are the packages i introduced today numpy pandas sklearn matplotlib <coughs> so numpy is basically used to create arrays and array can be indexed and arrays can be sliced arrays can be sliced means uh, at any time i will be able to count the number of elements in the array i can uh, divide the particular array into two portions or everything is possible two arrays can be concatenated and why i am doing please take practice and data pre processing using pandas because now uh, what on the uh, on the whole you will be having three major activities in machine learning finally i touch upon deep learning machine learning one is data pre processing i mean data preparation data pre processing data modeling data visualization data pre processing and uh, what do you do you have to create the data frame i am talking data pre processing in terms of pandas pandas is one of the libraries in python so data frame is nothing but the data set okay because when you go when you are going to analyze data pre processing using pandas we we have the alternative terms for data sets that's all and uh, data frame is nothing but the data set so you can create the data frame the data frame can be created using dictionary what is in a dictionary as per json it will have the key value pair similarly we have lot of data frame operations i can sort the data in the data frame and i can uh, remove the duplicate rows uh, if i happen to find any missing value in the data frame i can replace the missing value at any time i can group the data that we call as the binning so in the pandas data structures we have three more concepts series data frames and panel series is nothing but one dimensional data data frames two dimensional data panel is three dimensional data what we have to consider today data frames two dimensional data uh, why we are using pandas pandas is basically used for data pre processing again pandas is capable of dealing with the descriptive statistics descriptive statistics means uh, with the capability of the pandas it can give the values for mean median mode variance correlation whatever uh, parameters you are going to discuss under statistics because in machine learning statistics is going to play a vital role and reindexing uh when we are going to look at the program we will see what we mean by reindexing and how we are going to deal with indexing how i am going to select the data and uh, how i can look at missing data if the missing data is going to occur in the data set how i am going to eliminate or drop it so pandas demo i will finish first modeling at the end first you remember i have to run pandas demo through programming so finally last 10 to 15 minutes it will be like a programming class just uh, listen no doubt i hope i am going slowly and steadily in such a way that everyone can understand fine now second phase what i am going to discuss is the uh, data modeling i already said data modeling in data modeling we have lot of algorithms supervised learning algorithms unsupervised learning and 
so what i am going to discuss today is the neural network actually sometimes if you deal with the neural network it may seem to be very complicated but if you really understand through problem solving it will be very very easier because the whole neural network is the uh, is playing a vital role in deep learning if you do not have a strong foundation of neural network you cannot understand anything from deep learning in terms of cnn architectures or rnn architecture because deep learning is the another subject actually okay advanced machine learning so what i mean by neural network i already said that our brain is having uh, billions of neurons each and every neuron is connected with one another to achieve the particular task that brain only actually we are simulating in our artificial neural network so what is meant by neural network a set of connected input output units where each connection has a weight associated with it and uh, so you, i will show the diagram so that uh, you can understand during the learning phase the network learns by adjusting the weight so as to be able to predict the correct class label of the input tuples input tuples means input records class label means output class label. now please you remember from the data uh, set whatever i say whatever i said okay network learns by adjusting the weights so this is one simple diagram uh, in the actually now i get into the somewhat uh, neural network now 320 no problem even in the afternoon i motivate you uh, okay to pay careful heed on to such subjects with the interest if you look at this neuron uh actually our brain is having lot of neuron i already said okay this is the input vector x0 x1 x0 so what i mean by suppose for example i have been talking to you and you have been attending my class what is happening i have been delivering means uh, i am giving my information as output and you are receiving uh, my output information as the input for you so you try to understand what i mean by okay so for example you try to understand what i speak that is nothing but the input vector x0 x1 x n like for the time being remember like because there the huge max will be there again for each and every x0 x1 there will be the weight w0 w1 and wn and some weighted sum will be there okay summation weighted sum will be there after that one activation function is there that means uh, there are there will be one strike and uh, it it will be a non linear function non linear function even our brain is also capable of doing the non linearity for example nowadays if i ask one question towards you which is the very difficult task in our life modeling human behavior for example uh, you may be having uh, three or four friends okay surrounding you a particular time but uh, once to uh, your friend is asking uh, some amount okay uh, please help me uh, i have met with uh, some problems i need 5000 for example your name is babu your friend's name are going to be balu and gopu so balu is asking 5000 rupees from babu so babu is having babu wants to help balu the moment uh, balu ask babu is giving but uh, when the babu is giving the money to the balu uh, balu is the borrower and uh, he is giving promise after one month i give the money back one month has gone and again two months have gone next time he is asking money and uh, he is telling that uh, uh, he has to give a proper answer actually as a borrower but what he is telling uh, no 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 now i cannot give i don't have what kind of experience the babu is having i mean the person who was given the amount oh, some negative experience oh, actually i helped him but at the same time not able to collect the money from him some negative experience similarly again another friend okay gobu is asking some money 10000 rupees uh, towards the babu babu is fair enough to give uh, money or is fair enough to help others and he didn't think about uh, earlier negative experience but at the same time the babu wants to help this person also gobu okay he is immediately giving 10000 to gobu again gobu is giving promise okay after two months i 10000 again two months have gone three months four months 
even gobu is also taking okay give money back to bob what will be the behavioral pattern of the bob so from these two negative experiences next time he will be very keen in helping others even though he is having money he may not help so this is kind of the problem so some linearity or non linearity is not able to uh, judge others that i called as a active function that's all for the time being i told active function and again some function will be there you have to multiply this wixi plus my okay what's happening you please look at one this graph quickly i can explain if you look at this graph 1 2 3 these are this is the input layer technically called as the input layer 4 5 this is the hidden layer and 6 is the output layer so 1 2 3 are going to be the input units input units each and every input unit is connected to the hidden layer that is called as the hidden layer so 1 2 3 are going to be the input units input units actually this is what happening in the brain okay so 1 2 3 are going to be the input units that is called as the hidden layer 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 that is called
the behavioral pattern of the particular person cannot be understood so 1 by 1 plus e power minus x this is the activation function and here what i am doing simply remember like this if i show this graph uh, for time being you remember like that for every node for every node there will be input and output for example for this four you have to calculate i4 o4 for five i5 o5 for six i6 o6 that's sufficient now let me explain how you are calculating i4 that's all how you are going to calculate i4 this is very simple what you have to do you have to multiply x1 into w14 plus x2 into w24 plus x3 into w2 very simple whichever links you are having from the previous units in the input layer just you do the multiplication and summation weighted sum x1 into w14 plus x2 into w24 plus x3 into w34 this is nothing but the i4 are you able to follow and o4 is nothing but having computed i4 o4 can be computed like this 1 by 1 plus e power minus this i4 1 by 1 plus e power minus i4 this is what i am doing here if you look at the value x1 1 x2 0 x3 1 and uh, w14 okay w24 w34 like that other weight values are also there w14 w24 w34 so you multiply 1 into 0.2 plus 0 into 0.4 plus 1 into minus 0.5 you are getting minus 0.7 and how you are ca calculating the O4? O4 is nothing but 1 by 1 plus e power minus i4. So 1 by 1 plus e power minus of minus 0.7. 1 by 1 plus e power 0.7. That is nothing but 0 0.32. Now you tell me, is there any difficulty? Nothing. So as such, as such, you will be able to compute the output value, the output uh, value for each and every unit. So what is my interest? First, okay, sir, you are telling some diagram, you are showing some neural network. What is my interest? The interest is, suppose this is the uh, <coughs> 101. 101, this is the input attributes, first record. The actual value is 1. The output, class label, always, you please recall the previous data set. Yes, no, I returned some age, income. Uh, credit rating similarly here i have three three attributes one two three the final one six is the output the actual output is one but what you are going to do now while you are going to test again you have to get the same one if there is any deviation error will occur so this is the actual output is one and you do some computation finally you are reaching i4 o4 i5 o5 i6 o6 so O6 is the computed value. Actual value is 1. While you are going to compare computed value and actual value, if there is any deviation, I call it as the error. This error must be minimized. This error must be minimized for generating the model. Again, for unseen data. Once I can tell you, it's very simple. And again, a lot of concepts are there. For time being, I leave it. But while you are going to work out this algorithm, I tell you, and normally what the students are doing in any college arts and science or engineering college they memorize the algorithm without solving uh, algorithms i tell you one important thing towards the entire students community we are interested in selecting the ml developer or deep learning developer or data scientist means in the curriculum itself your algorithm whether the university may be asking problem solving or not is not a problem at all you must solve problem you must enjoy by yourself for understanding that algorithm that algorithm only you are going to represent in terms of python packages in some other fashion that's all and those packages again you have to take practice that programming part is totally different but at the same time if you do not have a basic problem solving for each and every machine learning algorithm for example data structures algorithm dbms so the one thing i tell you the whole computer science is not a theoretical subject it is a pakka mathematical problem formulation for every subject that you have to understand okay 
And sixth step, I already said, if you look at the eighth step, IJ, summation J, WIJ, OJ plus theta J. What are you doing? I am multiplying weight and the output of the previous one, 1, 2, 3 plus theta. Theta is the bias. What I am putting? OJ equal to 1 by 1 plus e power minus J. This is output. What uh, hereafter, I don't want to explain. We due to the shortage of time. I am getting the error. Now you know the meaning of the error, at least because all these terms I, uh, I am interested in explaining. Because instead of telling small, simple algorithms, it is having a very powerful uh, package. And you have to, so the whole idea is you have the data set, you have certain samples and attributes, and you have to train using the cancer algorithm. Here we are interested in applying the back propagation neural network, and I am uh, computing the output. Uh, okay value for each and every unit from the hidden layer to the output layer. But if you look at this subject, what will happen here, only one hidden layer is there. Here, only one hidden layer is there. This is input layer, hidden layer, output layer, only one hidden layer. But you can have multiple hidden layers. You can have multiple hidden layers. That you please understand, okay? Now, after this step, so OJ you are getting. So as I said earlier, the actual value is one, and you are going to compute. Uh, you are going to derive something. For example, it is going to be 0.8. There is a difference with respect to the error. How that error is going to be back propagated? So again, for each unit J in the output layer, you do the error computation in each and every layer. You do traversal from the output layer to the hidden layer, hidden layer to the input layer. That we call as a gradient. It's nothing but the partial derivative. I think uh, differential calculus, the students might have studied plus one plus two. Actually, most of the students do not know the application of trigonometry, differential calculus, integral calculus, matrices in max. But in higher classes and engineering, especially in industry, development industry or uh, research industry, heavily used. No doubt in that without purpose why they are having a syllabus in university or colleges. So error is going to be computed. So what is really happening? Uh, I don't want to illustrate the complete algorithm. It will take uh, more time. But instead, I can explain. The only idea is uh, the actual value is what? Through computation, you are getting some 0.7. So there is a difference error. This error has to be minimized. In order to minimize the error, you do traversal again from 6, 5, 3, 6, 4, 1. And 5, 2, 3, 2, 1, back propagation. And why you have to back propagation for computing the error, but at the same time, your objective is to update the weights. The next iteration, the weights will be changed. These weight values will be changed. So initially, you initialize certain weights. Okay, initially, you initialize the weights. Sometimes you can ask, sir, weights are fixed. No, dynamic. Because randomization, you use the randomization for initialization of weights, you do the computation, you get the error. In order to reduce the error, you do the back propagation from the output layer to the input layer. Again, the second iteration, iteration one, iteration two, the iteration two, again, you will be having new weight values, new W14, W15, and W24, W35. It's what happening here. That's all. Please look at it. Complete calculus. I tell you, if you're really going to solve this problem, it will take one and a half hours. But this one and a half hours is going to be the basis for your neural network. With that only, anyone can become a machine learning developer, especially with respect to neural network and deep learning developer. Because we are in shortage of uh, people. Actually, we have a lot of jobs, but we are not able to select the proper candidates with respect to the problem solving and uh, programming part. Similarly, now, as I said earlier, for each and every unit, you are calculating error 6, 5, 4. Again, the weights are going to be changed. Please look at it. All the weights, you follow the algorithm, you have a new weights and a bias value. Again, these weights will be applied over the entire machine learning process. Thing now, uh, I can go back. Because if I don't illustrate, there is no point in telling uh, what I'm going to explain. Okay. Well, quickly, uh, I can get into the programming after some time. Actually, I wanted to tell so many things, but for the sake of the undergraduate students, I'm going slowly and steadily.
So after assume that now you have developed the model, you trained the model, you have tested the model, and uh, it is uh, capable of doing the proper classification. And as I said earlier, you have to do the hyperparameter tuning, initialization of the weights, and you have to select the activation function. I said one by one plus c power minus x. Like that, you have a lot of function, tan h function, and like that. Optimization algorithms are there. These optimization algorithms are going to be useful in the case of error computation. Error computation. One of the optimization algorithms is gradient descent. You can remember gradient descent algorithm. So gradient descent algorithm I am using for computing errors. And learning rate. Learning rate will also be used because some students may be learning very quickly. Some students may not be learning very quickly. Like that, in the neural network itself, learning rate is there. That neural learning rate you have to assume by yourself. So again, with respect to initialization of weights, how do you assign the weights? Randomization of the weights. The weights can be assigned through the normal distribution or uniform distribution. Just to you note down all these points. That's all. Activation functions. 1 by 1 plus uh, e power minus x sigmoid, similarly tan h, relu, leaky, lelu, elu, lot of formulas will be there. You have to use an optimization algorithms, stochastic gradient descent. Why this optimization algorithm I am using in the data modeling? I tell you, everybody is interested in studying machine learning. But data modeling means complete max. And after computing the error, you are you want to reduce the error. So the errors can be reduced by gradient descent, stochastic gradient descent, which is one of the optimization algorithms. Similar to stochastic gradient, many algorithms are there. Momentum, ADA grad, ADA delta, RMS prop, ADAM, everything. Please, you saw, I tell you one thing. In our company, even BSc computer science, BCA, BE, a lot of students join certification courses and developer programs for a longer period. And they have proper mathematical knowledge and coding. Coding coding is very important, what is required for the industry. Sometimes we uh, intern will also be given after some time. And they get into the bigger companies with the greater salary. That is very important. So here, the skills are acquired apart from the mathematical skills. Again, some lot of formula will be going on. I skip it. Stochastic gradient descent. How do you do regularization? And uh, the, what is this by update? Weight update. That's what because I said that for every iteration, weights will be very new for minimizing the error. Stochastic gradient is an updating the parameter and overfitting and underfitting. This only thing theoretically you can understand, and uh, uh, practically also we will be able to show overfitting and underfitting means with respect to the training data and testing data, how the data has been uh, distributed. So, with respect to the distribution of the data only, you will be able to quickly look at it whether overfitting data or underfitting data. So learning rate, you can have a low learning rate, high learning rate, optimal learning rate. I tell you, which learning rate is better? Optimal learning rate. Because some students may be studying very for last minute. Suppose ex tomorrow you have an exam. Now most of the students, what do you do? Last minute you are studying. High learning rate without wasting a single minute. 10 hours, 12 hours you are studying. Group study, everything with a vacation. But actually, you may not be able to derive complete knowledge. But this is what happening in the Indian scenario. But optimal learning rate is even during college days with the interest, uh, like how I am watching movies, how I play football, how I play cricket. Actually, you need to have the passion. You have to have the passion and vision for doing anything because uh, we are very happy to say that uh, Indian new Indian cricketer, Narajan, Actually, he has come from the rural place, but to which extent he has gone? So the pain is there. So he has put a lot of pain. Accordingly, he has lifted and he has reached his momentum. Like that, any students from any colleges, rural places or city places, don't underestimate your knowledge. Every one of you is highly valuable. You please try to have passion and vision to study. Okay. So because of the learning rate, I have an option to tell such kind of motivation. And again, this is the linear regression, another algorithm, but we don't have time. But anyhow, this is not a, a difficult one. Linear regression, you already studied. How to fit a straight line? Y is equal to mx plus c in lower standard, h standard and n standard. So if you look at that problem, y is equal to mx plus c, you can fit a straight line. And basically, linear fitting the straight line is used for prediction. Similarly, linear regression, logistic regression is used for prediction. Again, now, uh, anyhow, I remember uh, before 4 o'clock, just I run two or three programs. I've lost 10 minutes, I run the program.
just i touch upon other concept deep learning just to you note down okay some new terms you try to derive uh, from the industry expert here and there for the deep learning also you have a lot of python libraries and in deep learning what you do you will be having lot of uh, hidden layers actually hidden layers uh, will be more and size of the network you have lot of architecture cnn architectures and rnn architectures normally for image processing for image processing for text analytics image processing you will be using cnn for text analytics you will be using rnn now you can ask one question sir what we mean the image analytics every day knowingly or unknowingly you are dealing with the image processing okay suppose you take a photo selfie and uh, suppose somebody is having uh, a black color and they want to change the black color into white color with the rest of the skin uh, bride groom or bride whatever it is and something uh, why we are doing all this thing because we want to beautify ourselves uh, and we want to present very well so image processing is actually we are, we are having lot of uh, our personality traits by ourselves for example our eye is the lens okay i am able to see any image within my range and uh, what kind of uh, image processing uh, i can do by myself so what kind of image processing activities my eye can do similarly the machine learning is having the capabilities of the lot of uh, image processing one of the concepts of the one of the uh, concepts uh, coming under the image processing image captioning image captioning means for example there will be one image uh, one image and certain objects are there certain objects in the sense that cat is there and some the rat is there uh, uh, it is assumed that the cat is chasing the rat in the image itself anyone can see the cat is chasing the rat now if i show this uh, back image to you any human being can uh, tell by looking at the image oh here as with, uh, with respect to this diagram or image cat is chasing the rat now i ask one question this image i am going to show towards one computer but how the computer is able to tell the cat is chasing the rat that is the concept so image caption okay another one from the text rnn why recurrent neural networks are going to be useful for text analytics and knowingly or unknowingly as a end user we do many things from the google for example in the google search box you type something the moment to you type uh, for example the moment to you type uh, java you are getting java language or java island the moment you type anything in the search box correspondingly you may be having different terms which will be popped from the background from where it is coming in general we used to say from the server it is coming from the database it is coming no 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 it is coming with the help of rnn only recurrent neural networks using the text modeling text modeling so all the uh, day to day activities are implemented using cnn and r uh, just i show python libraries for deep learning at least you can note down because this is the advanced area there will be the concept called keras and the tensor flow keras programming tensor flow programming pytorch programming mxnet programming cv2 programming nltk programming six different programming concepts are available for implementing deep learning keras tensor flow pytorch mxnet so if you are going to understand all these packages one after another you can get into the deep learning this is the one of the use cases of deep learning digit recognition how the machine itself is going to recognize the digit digit recognition mean the uh, the machine is going to look at the character a it has to say a so it is following the concept called lenet lenet architecture using lenet architecture or alexnet or uh, vggnet digit recognition can be performed using cnn and uh, in this uh, deep learning you have lot of concepts actually due to shortage of time i skip this connet fully connected fully connected layer only we discussed deep neural networks okay again convolutional layer and the pooling layer lot of mathematical concepts are there and if you look at any image suppose this is the car image and uh, suppose if there are car and a truck a car has to be distinguished from the truck how the image classification can be carried out 
and each and every pixels will have to be analyzed through the low level features this is a low level features mid level features high level features in the high level features only you will be actually getting the shape and features learning now i have different uh, types of uh, vehicles and uh, when i am going to pass a set of this a uh, data set pass it to the cnn it uh, will be able to distinguish this is a truck this is car airplane all these things the object classification image classification uh, can be easily implemented through the cnn again softbox is the classifier which is capable of classifying this so finally uh, deep neural networks uh that is nothing but the this is a foundation for deep learning you have a batch of data sample your batch of data in reality what will happen you will not be having 10 records you'll be having one crore 50 lakhs and the entire 50 lakhs will not be considered as it is the empty lakhs records will be divided into different different uh, batches each for example if i have thousand records and i can have 10 batches each batch can have 100 records that's the meaning of batch and forward it through the network to get prediction. We already done forward propagation from the input layer, hidden layer, output layer. Finally, you are computing the error. And back propagate the errors. I already explained. Update the weights. And based on that, the training is going to be carried out. A lot of operations available in the Linux layer. And you have different CNN architectures. AlexNet, ZFNet, VGGNet, GoogleNet, ResNet. All these are advanced. Companies. The students are capable of understanding anything, even from BSc, BCA. They can easily get into any company. Okay. And similarly, image processing, you have a lot of activities. You can do it. And finally, some TensorFlow demo also I show you. And before getting into the programming, there are certain use cases. Many use cases are available, scenarios. I already explained from the e-commerce as well as, uh, I think, uh, recommendation system and healthcare analytics and image processing, customer behaviors prediction, personalized recommendation, document analysis, machine translation, Anomaly detection and chatbot development. Chatbot is, I think, most of you might have seen chatbot, right? For example, if you happen to look at any web application where the user uh, front end and back end and database, front end may be developed using HTML5, CSS3, and JavaScript, and uh, Ajax, and Bootstrap. And back end, you can use any one of the languages. Uh, I think I'm talking about the full stack web application development, either Ruby on Rails or Node.js or Python Flask or Python Django or uh, Spring Boot. But what is happening, you have a web application on the bottom right corner, some window will uh, appear. That is nothing but the chat bot. That what means uh, whenever uh, the customer is able is interested in making a complaint towards the service center nowadays what is happening uh, one person physical person from the service center will be talking to you okay oh your uh, complaint is booked i will visit your house within this 24 hours your complaint will be resolved actually the physical person has to come nowadays what's happening in future instead of the physical persons software chatbots are capable of talking to the customers that's what we mean by chatbots and we have dialogue flow from the google without ai from the yahoo without AI from the sorry facebook and lex from the amazon and text summarization automated image captioning in drones and all uh, drones uh, have the capability of uh, carrying out image captioning and speech analytics alexa and siri now everybody knows alexa you do this and i have the personal assistant Siri to implement this and uh, go and uh, bring this uh, book. And I can assign any kind of task to the Alexa or Siri, but the, these devices will have to understand what I'm speaking. That is very important. So in future, a lot of things are going to happen. Magic is happening and video activity recognition. So with this, I stop. Now I run the two or three programs just to listen. Anyhow, I'm very happy that uh, you are waiting for uh, your Put your efforts to listen to my talk for uh, nearly uh, one and a half hours, just 10 minutes. I run certain programs, then you will be happy with that. That's all. So, this is the example for the data pre processing pandas because pandas and keras, two scenarios, I want to show one demo within five to 10 minutes. Just uh, you look at the program first. Suppose the very big, when the scratch has gone up to the advanced level, but when you are going to experiment uh, any application, first you should not deal with any application with the 500 lines or 10,000 lines. Actually, in reality, we, we have a lot of LOCs. 
but you have to start from a small small piece of code then you have to assemble and uh, there is a possibility for developing any machine learning applications now this is a very simple one <coughs> straight away i think i go to the uh, okay import pandas as pd import numpy as np and pd dot series this is series is nothing but one dimensional data five comma index equal to zero one two three print of s so if you are going to run this program what is happening zero one two three five 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 please uh, look at this code uh, what i have shown this is the one diamond this is the data set one dimensional data set the value is five the value 5 is going to be displayed for all the four samples. So if you look at the code, four samples, this is one data set. I am generating data set from myself because this is the kind of the industrial training we used to give from the scratch towards any person who is going to join for the certification. Fine. Second, if you look at it, small thing, instead of 5, I am changing the value. In the first two statements are common input pandas as pd input numpy as np data equal to np dot array a b c d four values i am assigned pd dot series of data print of s so when i am going to run this code what happened Uh, in the first program, I had only one value that I am assigning for all the rows. Now, each and every sample is having the different value. So, please look at the code. This is a code. Okay. Now, I get into the another one. This is a dictionary. So, A colon 0, B colon 1, C colon 2. Okay. A colon 0, B colon 1, C colon 2. In this way also, I can assign it. I can show the uh, effect of this series. Now, I have the, this is index. Actually, left hand side, whatever I have index, this is the value, float value I have. Now, I can explain, ah, this is nothing but the uh, pandas. So pandas as pd numpy create a dictionary of series. So if you look at this program, how many attributes I have? Name, age, rating. Three attributes I have, name, age, rating. For each attribute, I have the series. This is a two dimensional uh, data set. For each data, I have certain values. Suppose for the age, 12 values I have assigned. And I am creating the data frame. So, what you can understand import pandas as pd, a df, this is a data frame, is equal to pd dot data frame of d, print of data frame, data frame. And uh, when I am going to run this program, what happens? Just you see. Another five minutes, please you wait. Uh, this is the data set. So what I am actually doing, instead of uh, invoking the data set from the public uh, website, slowly and steadily, I am creating the data set from the scratch. So mean, uh, name, age, rating, I have 12 records. Uh, in the PPT slide, I happen to show certain data set. Now, practically, I am doing name, age, rating. And uh, I am displaying the mean, mean of this age, rating. Here you can use the term df.mean, that's all. Re-index of 0, 1, only I am picking the two rows. I am picking only two rows, that's all. Again, I show only certain effects of data pre-processing. I said that uh, missing value, right? Yeah. Let me explain this program. First I run this program, then you can understand. Import pandas as pd, import numpy as np, pd.data frame. Randomization, 5 comma 3, 5 rows and 3 columns. 3 columns, 1, 2, 3, 5 rows I have. Index is A, C, E, F, H. So I am doing the re-index. Why I am doing the re-index? For showing the effect of the missing value. 
uh, when I run this program, I tell you, as far as the programming is concerned, you have to enjoy the yourself slowly. You have to study. Now, you please understand, I am the founder and CEO of the company, but I am showing the very fundamental concepts as well as advanced concepts, mathematical programming also, very small program and very big code. We will be able to explain and we have sufficient knowledge. Okay. If you look at these programs, uh, you can understand certain things. A, C, E, F, H, five rows are there, three columns, one, two, three. And this is a randomization values. Why this randomization is occurring? Because of this np.random.randn of 5, comma 3. And now re-index of A, B, C, D, E, F, A, G, H. Actually, in the previous index, I have only A, C, E, F, H. First time I'm displaying the data set. Second time, uh, because of the re-index, in the original program, the original data set, I have the index column A, C, E, F, H. But when I'm going to do the re-index for the purpose of showing the missing value, want only I introduce B, D, and G. For these three rows, I do not have values. B, D, G. Some values appear over there. N, A, N. What is the meaning? Not a number. N, A, N. Not a number refers to missing value. Not a number. This is what uh, practically we are doing like this. Suppose theoretically, uh, normally what happens even after studying data many subjects, explain the functionalities of data pre -pause. Anyone can write data cleaning, data transformation. They can get 5 out of 5. But when they come to the industry, we ask the people to do write a Python program uh, for finding the missing value, now you drop it immediately in front of me. They have to do it. So, NAN is a, not a number. This is a missing value. This missing value occurs against the rows B, D, and G. Okay. Now, want only, I have shown the power of the missing value. Next step, what I am doing, I am removing the missing value. For removing the missing value, I use a concept called df.dropNA. Because of the drop in A associated with the pandas. So again, original data set I am having. Original data set I am having. Like this, lot of concepts are there. So suppose this is the data cleaning. So how I am doing the data cleaning. And uh, again, how I am doing the not null. Again, this is something... For example, not only I have dropped the missing value, I can fill the value by the missing value. I run this program, which is probably I stop. And does clean fill in a backward not clean what's happening you please listen when you look at this first of all, i show the program the same program actually i am making little bit changes in the previous version only so up to this point, pandas as PD, numpy as NP, okay. And print, first time I'm printing the data frame. Second time also I'm printing the data frame, three times. So five rows and three columns, A, C, E, F, H, one, two, three. And here I am doing the re-index. Because of this re-index only, uh, this NAN is appearing. Up to this I explain. Now, if you look at the last statement, in the previous uh, okay, exercise, I was interested in dropping the missing value. So I use the drop in here. Now I want to fill the value. Fill in here of method equal to backfill. Fill in here of method equal to backfill. Because of this, what happens? If you look at the second row, B, NAN occurs. But because of the fill backfill method, 
it takes the values from the third record the second record is taking the values from the third record the second record is taking the values to third record like this lot of programs are there now finally i explain only one Okay. Actually, any machine learning and deep learning applications can be run over collab.research.google.com. Please, audience, you can note down students, collab.research.google.com. They are freely giving their own instances. And what you have to do, if you have the account, Gmail account, and uh, you click, uh, you can type this with respect to your account, you will be able to connect. That will be the connect. And uh, I'm showing only one program, then you can run it. For example, this is from the deep learning. Uh, this will be the last uh, discussion. Import NumPy SNP. Suppose import NumPy SNP, I already said. This is a Keras. Keras dot models, sequential model and layers. Layers means neural network, dense layer, activation layer. Now you are able to follow. And I want to use only optimizer function, model equal to sequential. Yes, sequential. And uh, with respect to uh, that CNN architecture, actually, we didn't have time to explain. Anyhow, model.add dense and activation. Again, you can compile and you can construct a very big uh, neural network. That's what I'm telling. After constructing big neural network, if you are going to train the neural network, what is happening? This is what simple example. Just uh, I'm showing. Again, I run it. So it will run like this. So before training, after training, I am showing the concept of the optimization algorithm from the uh, gradient descent or ADA grad or ADA delta uh, for finding out the, uh, for reducing the errors as well as you can update the weights. Like this, lot of uh, applications are there, image classification application and so many applications are there, text analytics and all these things I explained. Uh, I think with this, uh, probably uh, I can close. Thank you. Thanks a lot for the opportunity given to me. Professor? Uh, yes, sir. Uh, any questions from uh, the audience? Uh, only one question, I think. Kindly help to pick up the real time data sets with the actual ranges of the parameters. Uh, the real time yeah, yeah, data yeah, yeah. sets. Yeah, yeah, it's yeah, not yeah. possible the time consuming it is like, yeah sure 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 think. one day it's not possible sir lot yeah, of it's not because possible. i wanted to show the full power of different packages the people should understand yeah instead of the resource person i, I am answering the question <laughs> yeah 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 correct 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 uh, which are because we take more time to elaborate everything yeah. Yeah, right. yeah 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 very difficult because i can explain but the audience may not be able to follow that is a big problem that's why I started from the scratch. I have gone up to some level. I stopped. And I was interested in explaining the application. I have given the something. OK. So, okay. Can we? Uh, uh, Ms. Kavitha, ma'am, tell me the yes, order of time. Uh, yeah. Sir, uh, yeah. Is, now I call upon Kavitha, ma'am, to propose the order of thanks. Yes. Good evening, one and all present here. I would like to thank our resource person, Mr. Srinivasan Tanukrishnan, founder and CEO of Glosis Technology Solutions Private Limited, for enlightening us with his vast knowledge of machine learning and deep learning. Thank you, sir. I extend my thanks to Dr. T. Vail Murugan, head of DCA department, for providing the support to make the seminar successful. Thank you, sir. Also, thanks to students and my dear colleagues. Thank you once again to making it a great success. Thank you once again. Thank you. Thank you. Everybody got Thank you. Thanks a lot. Thanks. Thank you, sir. Can we end the broadcast? Yes, sir. Yeah.